Good afternoon. Thank you for choosing us, your podcast of choice. <laughs> it's episode 219 of Heroes of Handheld, where the premium podcast dedicated to handheld gaming. We talk about 3DS, 2DS, Vita, uh, Switch, mobile, iOS, Android. If it's handheld gaming, if it's mobile, if you can take it with you, then we're going to talk about it, by golly. Uh, my name's Colin. I'm one of your hosts, and I'm joined by the man with the plan. It's Mr. Pearson behind door one. Hey, it's me. Do, do, I'm do, the do, prize. Do, 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 that's my is that blind date i think that was blind date uh, I, I think that was blind date come on down i, I didn't really watch that was blind price date. is right that was not um, uh was it not <laughs> maybe, maybe it was price is right i'm thinking of what was the game where there was that little mountain climber and you had to guess how high he was going to go before he fell off catchphrase no, did you not watch game shows? Did you not watch Brucey? The Generation Game? No, oh, that was um. I, I grew up with Jim Davison hosting that. Yeah, do you remember when Anton Deck used to do that show after? It was called Best of Friends. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Then Ian Wright took over. Yeah, because they left to ITV. Did they leave to ITV? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that was epic. And like at the end, they had a chance to like take it all for themselves and leave their friends mm. behind. Like they Such could either risk day. it all or just go on holiday on their own. And most of the time, they always did it with, um, they always chose their friends. But there's one guy actually did it alone and just won all of it for himself. That's fucking amazing. Hilarious. That was great. But all the games are really boring. It's a bit like the cube now. It was mostly like throw a ball inside the target, jump over a stick. It was never like really challenging. Get well, it's probably challenging, but it's always like really basic things. Are you excited for Love Island on Monday? Oh, mate. I was watching the uh, the videos today with all the new contestants. I'm so keen. Oh, my God. It's going to be great. <laughs> Danny Dyer with an eye. I know. Who'd have thought? Well, I wonder, is that casting her is a bit like when they cast Marcel last year. Oh, paging Dr. Marcel. I'm so excited, mate. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to it. Profi. Honestly, every now and then I check in to see how all the people from last year are doing on Instagram. Mm. And from what I can tell, only one couple is still together. That's Camilla and Jamie. They're the only didn't, ones. Um, didn't so, two of them got married, didn't they? Jess and Don. Oh yeah, Jess. No, that's so weird because they didn't even really like each other. Mm. Like I swear, she liked she kept going for other men, but he kept going back to her. And eventually, they got married and sold the whole story to a magazine. But then our girl Caroline Flack, she's also engaged to a guy from The Apprentice. The Apprentice, I know. Uh, but Camilla and Jamie are a really cute couple. I'm well on board. They seem that. really genuine, don't they? Like the whole mm. uh, thing. Like, it just seems nice. It's just nice. They're normal. They need more, more like, normal people in there because uh, Love Island's great entertainment, but the people in there aren't normal. They know what they're in there for. They're in it for a bit of fame. They're just not nice people. Uh, here's the thing, Colin. Mm. I don't actually care about any of that because I really want to know what you've been playing this week. Well, you'll be unsurprised to hear that mostly I've been playing Skyrim on my Nintendo Switch, but I have actually also been playing more of Hogwarts Mystery, the Harry Potter mobile okay. game. I'm into year three now. As I think I might discuss this last week, how it really is reaching its full potential, in my opinion. Now, there's side quests, there's things. The problem that people had before is with. Um, the game if you weren't doing the main storyline and you ran out of energy that's pretty much nothing you could do you just yeah. had nothing else to do but now they've added like side quests and side missions there's dueling you can do classes there's so much more to it now and it's opened up to loads of new characters um there was a really good storyline involving hagrid which i've just finished which was actually really interesting uh and i might have been involved in naming a certain uh pet he has <gasps> that'd be me who chose the name is oh. it uh, is it canon uh i don't know to be honest with you i hope so because otherwise my life is a lie i don't know if jk rowling has actually come out and officially endorsed it i don't know who, which which pet did you name fang fang my boy like because you have to um you have your courage your knowledge and your um something else you have to level these up the more you do you get more points and you level up and the more you level up the more conversation options you get and actually I, i've not obviously played more than one playthrough so it might not really make a difference but it seems like by choosing the ones that you can only choose if you've got high knowledge or high compassion and courage or whatever 
cha really changes what you're saying to a character. So, mm. in my opinion, would change their thoughts on you and how the story progresses, but maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But I had to have a certain level of knowledge to call the dog Fang, and I did, and I was, I was really happy about that. Oh. Because, uh, hopefully, in, in years down the line, when we eventually get an eighth Harry Potter book, they'll mention Cole's burn and his yeah. exploits at Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> I always call myself Coles. I love that. I like I actually, real name. Burn spin off. I know the Coles Burn Adventures, but the story, the main story, is actually really interesting as well. You're getting more into that about the curse of Alts and your brother, um, and more characters are coming in now who are part of the Harry Potter world, and they've actually brought them in. And it's not, it, it's a little bit feels a bit shoehorned in, but they've done it in a, a quite a good way as well. So, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm still liking it. Still not, still not spent a penny on it either. And I'm very proud of that. A lot of people I know who play it actually haven't either. But I think if most people have been playing it, um, you know, just waiting for your um, energy to refill naturally and not paying for it, then I think you're probably going to be, if you've been playing it as much as me, you'll probably be on like year three now. I'd, I'd be surprised if there's anyone, unless they've paid like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds to progress. I'd be very surprised if anyone's much further than year three, to be honest, because mm. each year probably takes you about a couple of weeks, a good couple of weeks to get through. Um, obviously, when you're waiting for the energy to refill and stuff like that. But it's really good. And Skyrim, really liking it as well. I'm doing the magic, um, I think it's the magic guild storyline at the moment, which is really interesting. Um, I had a really, I don't, did you ever do the magic one? Yeah, complete it, mate. There's a really good one, good one. Um, there was a, uh, there's really, I, I don't think this is spoilers, but basically, I'm going through this dungeon, I'm trying to find these books, um, which have been stolen. And halfway through, you meet this character, and you can either choose to rescue them or leave them there. So, I rescued this person, and at the end, you have a, a choice as to whether you, um, well, you can do it in two ways. You can either go the full um, guerrilla warfare style and like try and destroy everything, or you can just like make a trade. And I tried so many times to do the like the aggressive way by taking them down. I just couldn't do it. So in the end, I just traded and walked off. And I, I, I was just fine. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what? Um, yeah, I vaguely remember, but I don't really want to talk about it too much in case it is spoilery. F you them. But Skyrim's great and I'm really loving it and it's just marvellous. And I've just been playing my usual Xbox games. I started playing Battlefront 2 finally. I finally ripped off the plastic and installed that on my uh, Xbox. Not that impressed at the moment. It looks nice, but um, I've only played the heroes versus villains. And in the original Battlefront, or at least the, um, the original revamped Battlefront on Xbox One, with the heroes versus villains, there was a mode where there'll be three normal characters and then there'll be one or two, no, there'll be three heroes or three villains, and obviously these are more powerful characters, and then the rest will just be normal soldiers. And this sort of made it more interesting because it wasn't just a case of heroes and villains fighting it out. You had your soldiers as well who could also back you up and help you. Um, but now they seem to have changed it where the heroes versus villains game mode is just five heroes versus five villains, and it's just a bit boring you know because before you had to sort of get a certain amount of points and a certain amount of kills to be able to be a hero in the game but mm. now you're automatically one and it's just like oh I, I i like the idea of working towards being a hero or a villain i don't like the fact that i get to be one straight away i don't know that's the that's the only game i've played at the moment to be fair i've not played any of the sky battles or the um huge um, maps where there's like the ATATs and things like that, but I will say playing as Darth Maul is pretty fun. I'm enjoying that, and Yoda's annoying as well, he's very hard to kill. Uh, right, so that's what I've been playing. What have you been playing, Chris? Um, I have been playing Colin Burn, mm -hmm. I've, been playing, I've been playing quite a lot of God of War on PS4, which is very good. Um, but I want to wait until I finished it before kind of mentioning it more on here. I've been playing, um Desert golfing still, but I have today started playing Pokemon Quest on the Switch, which we'll talk more about later on. Um, because yeah, we'll talk more about that when we do the whole the whole Pokemon bundle because there's loads of Pokemon news we're gonna do. But Colin, to kick things off, hmm. I did this week have the chance at London Comic Con, a consumer event, to play Mario Tennis Aces. I'm excited uh, to hear your thoughts because I'm very keen on this. 
They were saying apparently this is the first time it's been playable in the UK as well. Like this is the first event it's been playable at. Nice. Um, and it was a there was a quite a long line to play. I'd say we queued for about twenty minutes to play. Not too um, bad. Not too partly, bad. Partly, partly because people once it got on, they didn't want to leave. Yeah. Um, Wasn't it? Didn't everyone have a time limit as to how long? Not really. They they weren't very good at, con- at kind of um uh yeah. con- controlling that. But whatever, it's fine. It's got to play. It. So I wasn't. I I played Mario Tennis a lot on the uh, Nintendo sixty four. I haven't really touched it since, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. But it is really fun, and we played a very limited uh, demo where there was only you could play as Mario, Peach, Yoshi, or Bowser. Um, I played as Yoshi. Uh, it's like very limited demo because you just played like a normal game with no items or anything just so you could get used to the controls and stuff um, and what I will say is the the basic tennis feels really good like it feels really fun to play um, you move at like a good speed you have good control over your shots as well like you it feels like you can actually do some like placement and stuff Um remembering the different uh buttons you have to press at the same time is easy because obviously you've got like you know a kind of forehand uh slice and a top spin but then if you press two buttons at the same time you'll do like a lob or a um uh is it a drop drop shot isn't it where you play it really close to the net uh so that's all that's all fine and plays really well and is really fun and like you know the game feels good good to play it feels like mario kart like it's responsive uh it vibrates when the ball lands that kind of thing when you hit it as well you get that kind of those nice like noises and so that's all fine but what i didn't know going in and what i thought was really interesting and what i think is going to elevate this game above just a normal tennis game is there's a mechanic where you play um basically each, each character has like a special meter okay colin shout out if you have any questions because i realize it's quite hard to explain each character has a special meter and the special meter fills up as you charge your shot so if you know where the ball is going to land you can anticipate it run to where the ball is going to land hold down a button and then when you hit the ball as like a reward for waiting you know in the right spot you get some special meter and the idea is that you keep filling up and filling up and filling up your special meter. Um, and then when you hit a certain button, you get to do a like a power charge shot, which is one we've seen in the trailer where the um, crosshairs come up, you float in the air, and there's like a percentage figure. Uh, and you can aim it, and you obviously hit the ball with incredible power. And that's quite fun anyway. But what I didn't realize going in is that that... <laughs> those shots won't necessarily end the game because you can also use your special meter to slow down the ball and to play the game in slow motion. So your character runs at normal speed, but the ball moves in slow motion. So what that means is that, you know, like you could just play a normal tennis game back and forth, back and forth, hit it to one side, hit it to the other side. But what is, I think, really interesting about the game is that there's like a, suddenly this is really kind of um, like complicated kind of bluff mechanic because I don't want to use my special if you are then just going to use your slow motion and be able to get to the ball and kind of essentially negate the purpose of the smash. So it's like a it's a timing game. It's a bluffing game. And presumably as well, there's going to be items and stuff which will throw in a whole other kind of uh, ballpark. In I'm there. guessing when you use your special move, it uses up. Yeah, you use up all use up all your meter. Whereas if you use the slow motion, you hold it down and it fuels it. So it hold it uses more the longer you hold it down. Hmm. So it's like it just like that dynamic is just so interesting to me. And I think will be really interesting in multiplayer as well, because it will, you know, you'll be like trying to go to the opponent and maybe you'll like do lots of lob shots because you know that they're more likely to do a smash. Uh, you've got to keep an eye on your opponent's special gauge because, you know, you, you want to get your shots in before they can deflect them. So, yeah, it's really com- like it's a really interesting mechanic. And I don't remember that. on the- I remember you could do charge shots on the N64, but this whole special thing, I don't remember being a big deal. 
so yeah, it, it made me go from I'm quite excited to this game to oh shit, I'm really excited. And like suddenly it's you know something that I'm gonna be getting on did day you, one. Did you get to see any of the story mode? No, you just played a game against the computer. Right. Um, okay. Hmm. So the, this there's some interesting rumors going on about the story mode because apparently uh, the, some um, because the there's the online demo which is out on Switch at the moment and the actual online tournament part of that starts on the first I think three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there is a a uh, th- this is spoilers for Mario Tennis. There is a um, not a hacker or a leaker, but like uh, someone's gone into the code basically and found the name of all the different voice files. So you can find all the characters if you look online. But also, interestingly, apparently uh, there aren't any voice files for Luigi. So we don't know whether Luigi is actually going to be playable or not. Mm, maybe he's the villain. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it would be it would be mad not being able to play as Luigi, though, right? Like, that's uh, cra- That just seems crazy. If there's no voice files, that means he's not in the game at all, surely. Mm. So yeah, we'll have to sure. see. Unless it's like Dark Luigi or something. Um, wow, Luigi. Wow. wow. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, yeah, it really um, got me excited for a game that I was kind of, you know, interested. Is it going to be similar to Wii Sports Tennis? Do you think, or is it, is it going to be better than that? No, I think it'll be better because you Wii Sports. Did tennis, you use the Joy Cons? That's is, that's another question I'm into. Uh, you do use Joy Cons, but not. I I didn't see I didn't get to play the mode where you do the motion control, but I know there is a motion control mode on the game. That makes sense. Um, but I didn't. The thing with Wii Tennis was you couldn't navigate your shots; you just had to hit the ball back. Whereas yeah. this is like you are steering your shots, and you do have control over the court. So, yeah, I re- I re- like I was really taken aback with it, and it looks so good, and it runs so smoothly. Uh, it just feels That's what like... you expect from a Mario game, though. You get that extra layer of polish that Nintendo gives on their games where they always work and feel and just play so well. Yeah, exactly. So not... I'm really hyped for this. Um, very briefly as well, I, did see, I didn't play, but I saw some people playing uh, No More Heroes 3 Travis Strikes Again, which looked really fun. The bit I saw was this kind of very zany, top-down, hacky, slashy arcade mode. Um, but I didn't get to play the actual demo, but it did look really good as well. So, mm. yeah, I mean, there was loads of stuff they had on display. They had, like, um, Detective Pikachu and uh, Dylan's Dead Rolling. Did you get to Rangers. play Detective Pikachu? No, because uh-huh. it, it was there. It was playable, but obviously the game's out. Um, I just uh, didn't really fancy playing it. Yet. Fair enough. I mean, I'm keen on Mario Tennis. I think that's going to be really good. I'd like a good old Mario game. And yeah, Mario I just Tennis. hope, like, as with all of these Nintendo games... I think it'll be really good as long as the online works properly. I really hope yeah. it does. When's this? Re- I know we got the um, June the twenty second. God, not long, not this long. Research. And I can't wait to give it a go. Um, I just hope they keep it fresh and it doesn't get stale too quick. Because mm-hmm. that's the problem with a lot of games like that, similar to the old table tennis game on Xbox three hundred and sixty from Rockstar. Where it was like it was great, but then after a few turns, just like oh, this is just tennis. This is just table tennis. I'm getting a bit bored now. So hopefully the story mode will freshen it up, and I hope the story mode there's actually extra layers to it. Like it's a bit. It's not just like a linear story of oh, you've gone this far. Now you play tennis against Waluigi. Oh, now you're yeah. here. Let's play looks, tennis against Bowser. It looks like it, the, there is more at play than that because it was a story trailer which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll see. But I hope the... Um, I've got a good feeling about it. And like I say, I just hope the online works. And, you know, the, the, the online tournament this weekend will be a really good test of that. So do download the demo and give it a try this weekend if you're interested. I will be doing that. That's very exciting. Did you learn or find anything else at Comic-Con whilst you were there? Uh, no, nothing really nintendo we. Well, then we uh, should move on then. We don't care yeah. about anything else. That's all we fucking care about, man. Man. I just want to quickly talk about a news story here. And this is about the days of play promotion. And uh, there's various different offers and discounts happening over in America. But uh, Japan is where we're interested in. I'm just going to briefly mention this because, you know, the Vita is long dead. We didn't care about the Vita. Well, we still we still care about the Vita. We love the Vita whilst it was here. It will live long in our memories and we're very fond of it. 
But in Japan, people still play it. As we reported last week, they're still making the physical cartridges for Vita games, which shows that um, it doesn't look like the Vita hype is going to end in Japan anytime soon. But as part of the Days of Play promotion in Japan, there's actually going to be a Vita bundle included. Uh, just getting the details of it now. Um, it's called the PlayStation Vita Days of Play Special Pack. And uh, for, I'm just looking at the packaging for this. It's a white colored Vita, which looks very nice. And it comes with a 32 gigabyte memory card. Um, so apart from that, I'm not too sure it makes it special, to be honest, apart from the fact it's white and has a memory card. But the price of that will be, let me just load up the price for that together. It will cost you, it doesn't say, well, that's, that's, re that's really really handy but if you do want to get a playstation vita and you're in japan and you like the color white and you like 32 gigabyte memory cards who doesn't when they're so darn expensive for vita um this is going to be live between the 8th and the 18th of june so 10 days to get this and this goes live um wait what's it now it's the 30th of may it's the 1st of june on friday so it'll be a week on friday Yes. Well, eight, 18th of June, not 8th of June. 8th of June. Yeah. Okay, you said 18th. So no, just clarify. The 8th, no, the, 8th, the 8th to the 18th. Starts on the 8th of June, <sighs> ends on the 18th of June. Okay. Yeah? You get me? You get me? Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Good. So it's good to see that the beat is still getting some life. And there's quite a uh, funky trailer for the Days of Play discounts and promotion in Japan as well, which I'm sure my lovely assistant will extract and put in the article for this week's podcast. Uh, <laughs> we've, we'll see. Got, we've got a lot of Pokemon news to talk about. And I would say... The story that we're going to go to first, because I'm deciding on what we're doing first, is probably the biggest one um, from this week. When I woke up this morning, it was all over my Facebook and Twitter, and everyone was talking about this. And that's the fact. Two games have been announced for Nintendo Switch to be released later this year. And those yeah. are Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. And what's interesting about this is it's heavily linked to Pokemon Go. So, um, in fact, if you do play Pokemon Go and you're going to pick up these games, I believe it's, was it the Kanto region, I believe? I think it's Pokemon that you've caught in one of the regions will actually appear in your inventory in the game itself. So they'll yeah. link together. From, uh, from Kanto, yeah. Kanto. I don't know if they've actually said how they're going to link together. I mean, from what I've seen... It seems like details are a bit sketchy at the moment as to what the real, the full link to Pokemon Go is going to be, because it's not by this um, this Switch game isn't by Niantic. I couldn't see their name anywhere on the trailer for it, which is interesting. But they seem to be working quite closely together. But also, quickly going to Pokemon Go news uh, to celebrate the announcement of this, you can get the Alohan, Alo, uh, Alolan, Alolan, Alolan. The Alolan Executor in Pokemon Go for a short amount of time. And if you don't know what one that is, it's Executor, the weird um, tree, um, which has the coconuts in, uh, palm tree, but it's got an extra long neck and it's very weird looking. And it's and absolutely for, hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious nerds, catching it because you, you can't see the head. For any nerds against the dragon type typing as well. Mm. So that uh, gives it some interesting type advantages. Mm. Um, yeah, po Pokemon Let's Go Peter and Eevee, to give yes. a bit more information, comes out 16th of November 2018 for the Nintendo Switch. It's got one to two local uh, multiplayer. It's based on Pokemon Yellow, the Pikachu edition from 1998. However, it, it's basically taken Pokemon Yellow and kind of jammed elements of Pokemon Go in, so you'll be catching Pokemon either by uh, pressing buttons or Ooh, by... Pokeball you... Plus. Yeah, using Pokeball Plus or by using motion controls. Mm. Uh, Pokeball Plus we'll talk about more in a second. Um, there's two versions, and you'll either befriend a Pikachu on Eevee, they'll follow you around, um, and obviously you can use them in battles and stuff. So it looks quite like yellow, but with a two-player co-op mode, which I'm really excited for. Um, 
Yeah, I just oh, I'm I'm keen for this, and people were having mixed reactions. Yeah, there's very um, mixed reviews online for this. Um, a lot of people worried because a lot of people think it's a negative that it's linked to Pokemon Go, which but is the, a... the some of the articles I've read have said that the way Pokemon Go integration is going to work is you will um you'll be able to find them, but not like as simply as it looks. Like you'll have to go to a special park. Um, there's also you can take your Pokemon. Uh, using this new peripheral, the Pokeball Plus, you can take your Pokemon uh, out of the game with you on a walk to get experience and stuff. And you can use Pokeball Plus like the Pokemon Go Plus. If you mm. remember that, po the, the little brooch, the brooch thing. So it's yeah. like a kind of extra version of that. So you can use the ball for Pokemon Go playing. It is, um, yeah, it does look very cool. Yeah, it's a, and the thing is as well with this game is like the... I think the fan reaction has been really positive because it looks fun. It looks pretty. It looks interesting. Um, and obviously there's some, some people were, you know, slightly negative about it because they were expecting like a more core Pokemon game. But the thing is, uh, since announcing this, Nintendo have announced two other games for Pokemon, uh, for Switch. The first, well, the first one being Pokemon Quest, we'll talk about in a second, but also they did tweet that a proper quote, core unquote rpg will come out next year so if you're not if you're a pokemon fan who thinks this is maybe looks a bit too simplistic for you you know there will be a, a more hardcore pokemon experience next year that's more in the vein of sun and moon x and y whereas this seems more like pokemon the go casual Jam gamers Pokemon. it's the casual gamers are trying to get with this one i reckon yeah and Sorry, you know it, back to it basics looks, yeah and it looks super fun and i think like See, well, I, think, I, I think it's a really smart move um I think Eevee's a really like popular and interesting choice and a kind of interesting parallel to Will, Pikachu. Chris, the big question is, would you choose Pikachu or Eevee? Here's, here's the thing, Colin. <laughs> yeah. I know what happened in my house because I don't know if I've told you about this or not, but my partner is obsessed with Eevee. Like yeah. it's her favorite, favorite Pokemon to the point where her dog who she got as a kid was called Eevee. Like she loves Eevee. So obviously it's going to be Eevee in our house. What I don't know is if I'll get Pikachu to compliment Eevee or if two Pokemon games in one house might be a little absurd. How different are these two games going to be as well? You yeah, know? it's hard. To, I mean, we'll get more information on that later on. It'll presumably be yeah. about exclusives and stuff. Um, um, and is there going to be any augmented reality in there as well? Because when you look at the trailer, there's a Pikachu running around this person's house. Is well, it, don't forget it, that that is there is augmented reality in Pokemon Go. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking with this. It's probably going to be on a bigger scale. But there isn't a um, camera on the Switch, is there? So how would they do it? Yeah, true. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll find a way. Um, very briefly as well, I wanted to talk about Pokemon Quest. What is this? Is, what is it? So this is... I did actually tell Colin to play it before the show, but he doesn't care about you listeners, so he wasn't committed to it. But basically, <laughs> this is a free-to-start uh pokemon game on the switch and it's going to come to ios and android later on uh this spring summer it's a top-down block it's like um the original 151 pokemon but with a kind of blocky twist it's like i'd say i wouldn't say it's like minecraft but i would say it looks like minecraft in terms of how how it looks because everything's made of uh you know squares and blocks um you st i've played up to the first island now so i played about half an hour of it um you pick a starter pokemon you befriend other pokemon what the, the battle fuck system, is this i'm sorry i've, the I've just looked at the bits of it what the hell they're all blocks yeah they are blocks i told you it's a Whoa. top down uh kind of real time fight system it sort of reminds me of pokemon mystery dungeon where you have a party of three um and they will auto attack, but you can charge up your your specials and do special moves. Um, obviously, it's free to start, but there is a currency model built in, which I've seen some people getting quite riled about because apparently you have to pay if you want more than 20 Pokemon in your collection. Uh, you can also pay to speed up um, certain processes and pay to unlock currency as well. Um, I feel, Yeah, like I say, I played it a little bit. I, I like it, uh, what I've played so far. But obviously, you know, these games, it's hard to judge when I've not I've not got to the point where I needed to felt like I was obliged to pay money yet. It runs well. Uh, I think it will be. It feels like a mobile game for Switch rather than a Switch game for mobile, if that makes sense. Um, mm. It feels like it will feel more at home on mobile. I'm hoping 
that there is some sort of cross account system so that when it comes on mobile, I don't have to redo everything. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you know it's all right so far. Like it is what it is. Um, it doesn't f it doesn't yet for me feel predatory, uh, unlike previous kind of free to play games. Um, but we'll see how it does. Like I'm going to keep chipping away at it over the next week and see at what point I give up on it. Um, It'll be interesting to see, yeah, if you're still playing it this time next week, or if you've just thought, yeah, exactly. But th this was like quite a surprising announcement from Pokemon to because we were like, oh. Well, we're going to get some more. And I'd originally put in a news story into the Google Doc, which I've since removed, because uh, one of the Japanese talk shows tomorrow is supposedly announcing a new Pokemon. And I was like, oh, shit, that's going to be huge news. But actually, then Pokemon just came out of nowhere with this press conference and were like, yep, yeah, here's, here's details of the next three things, and they're all coming to Switch. I'm surprised, actually, this, um, this Pokemon Go Island, um, Pokemon Quest which feels like it's kind of islandy i'm surprised it's not on 3ds because it feels like it could be but i guess you know but what does this show what does this tell us chris does it show you they're trying to shift their uh well maybe because like i don't know why it's mobile not, hmm. i don't well more to switch than to mobile hmm. um but oh, yeah, switch, I mean, sorry, yeah yeah that's what i meant it also shows that nintendo are very confident about their switch mobile collaboration efforts I think they never will never need to worry about Pokemon licensed games because they're always going to sell well. There's always a market for them. It doesn't matter what it is. People will lap it up, eh, Chris? Mm, eh? Like yeah, it looks like you. But I've got to say, this game, I wasn't um, aware of it. I'm looking at the pictures and it sort of threw me a little bit. It's very Minecraft looking to me. That is the, the current jam to make it look like Minecraft. Yeah. It re I mean, it it really does look like Minecraft, and that and it doesn't particularly play like it, but it's very like that whole block art style um, is still, quite kids like love kids love it. Yeah, true. Um, very briefly, some other bits of Switch news, if that's okay with you. Go on then. Uh, there is a new Captain Toad Treasure Tracker trailer, uh, which features much more gameplay from the game, which comes out in July. It's only a minute long. You can watch it on YouTube. It shows off some of the uh, new levels as well as some of the old ones from the Wii U version. Um, are you are you going to get Treasure Tracker? I'm quite keen for it. No. All right. What I am going to get is Team Sonic Racing. I'm well keen. I'm just watching the trailer right now. Is it okay if we move on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you move on. You I... apparently want to move on, so you move on. Because I love Sonic. I'm a big Sonic fanboy. I've been playing that man. That man? been playing that hog since... I was probably one of the first games I played when I had a, we had our Sega Mega Drive. Um, I love the TV shows. I'll even, I even like Sonic X. A lot of people didn't like the TV show Sonic X. I thought it was fine. Sonic. How, do you, how do you feel about Sonic Underground? I would say the best Sonic TV show. Now, there were so many Sonics. Well, Sonic Underground, was that the one where I had the epic theme song at the beginning? Sonic Underground! Yeah, it's the one where <laughs> they made a vow their but... mother would be found. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> Say that again. And it's it's the one, again. Sonic Underground is the one with all the music. So mm. Sonic plays guitar, and then the, oh, the, the pink yeah. girl plays like a, a keyboard, and then you've got the drummer who plays uh, drums. Of Green course, guys. the drummer who plays. Uh, and drums. I think they were, were they, they? I think they were siblings. Yeah, they must have been. Oh, there's one with a moustache as well. The old man Sonic. Yeah, Sonic Underground is 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 really like genuinely very good. The one it's very funny. Of, the one I'm thinking of, Chris, because I think you're forgetting the best one. I think was it just called Sonic the Hedgehog, and it was out in maybe the the late '90s or maybe the early '90s. Yeah, it's just called Sonic the Hedgehog. I'd recommend if you've not seen the theme song for just just search Sonic the Hedgehog TV theme song is epic. It is like proper 90s glam rock. It's great. It's Sonic the Hedgehog, the animated series. In fact, it's so fucking good. I'm going to put it in the dock right now. And Chris, you need to listen to it. It's epic. Okay, I will listen to it. Uh, Sonic X was good as well, though. Sonic X was cool. I'll listen to this at the end of the podcast. Please do. Please do. But very keen to hear there's going to be a racing game with Sonic. It's always confused me a little bit. There's been Sonic Team Racing before, which came out on PlayStation Vita, which I didn't... It came out on quite a few different platforms, to be honest. But I don't think it actually played very well on Vita. I played the demo, uh, frame rate issues and laggy and all this stuff as well. But this is called Team Sonic Racing. So it's they've sort of rejigged the name around because I swear it was called Sonic Team Racing. Before. Was it not called Sonic 
All Stars or something. Oh yeah, yeah, it was Sonic All Star Team Racing or something. Yeah, but yeah, good point. But I'm all they've done is taken the All Stars out. And put, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, I don't really understand. This has always confused me. In the trailer, you've got uh, Sonic and Shadow in some pretty bitching vehicles and speeding out of a garage. They're really. Why do they need cars? Sonic is one of the fastest things alive. He doesn't need a car. Mm. But he's just doing it to show off, or maybe he's doing it to give the other people um, a chance. But he's got a really nice blue convertible. He's got red rims. Um, Shadow's obviously got like a black car with a red finish and black. It just looks great. And it's coming out this winter, and I can't wait to play it. I think this will be really good. I need a good racing game in my life again. It's been too long since I played a decent racing game. Uh, on my Vita, I played that. Um, Oh, what was it called? It was a racing game where you're on tables. You're like mini cars, and you're oh, racing. um, ah, uh, was it that mod, is that Mod Nation? Oh no, it was tabletop racing. That's what it tabletop was. Racing, think, that's yeah, it. that was really good. I really enjoyed that one on um, Vita. So uh, I'm keen. It's been too long since I played a good racing game. I love Sonic. Uh, I love the um, the IP. So really, really looking forward to that. And I hope that Tails has a helicopter because that would make so much sense. A little yellow helicopter. That would just, that would just be great. Should be great. So yeah, coming out this winter, coming out on all the main consoles, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Switch will be the best console for that because you can take it over. You can play it wherever you go, and that's the main draw. That's Are you? Exciting. I'm not trying to. I'm like I don't want to be rude about people's gaming habits. Here we go. Here we go. But why do you want a new racing game? Because being too why, long. Why, why don't you just get Mario Kart? Um, it's like 50 quid, mate. <laughs> yeah, but Sonic All Stars Team Super Smash Highways Bro Racing. <laughs> so I would play a game called Super, I'll play a game called Super Smash Highways. That sounds fun. Um, no, I think it'll be around the 40 pound mark. Yeah, but you'll have to so uh, you would rather wait six months More and probably. save 10 pounds to play Sonic Racing <laughs> than bite the bullet now what? and buy Mario Kart, which is Look at that convertible. the greatest car racer of all time. Rims. Look at those fucking rims. You could buy Mario Kart now and trade it in and get money off Sonic All Stars Racing. Or I could just wait for you to buy Sonic Team Racing and then I can just borrow it off you. Me. Yeah, really? I see where this is going. <laughs> That's how it normally works. It's the bloody cool. bank of mum and dad, isn't it? Yeah. He said, it's not mum and dad, it's old Chrissy P. <laughs> <laughs> and it's bloody recorded postage. Anyway, uh, right. Um, let's move on. Sonic Racing. It's the new hip thing. Oh, Chris, there's there's a, there's a two DSXL news. This looked really cool. Yeah, this is, the, this is our last bit of news today. Yes. Um, and this is really cool, actually. Uh, Nintendo of America announced that a new Nintendo 2DS XL is coming to GameStop for $160 on July 2nd. And it's themed around a Hylian shield. So it's got the blue uh, like background and then the red, uh, gold, and silver crest on the top. Um, and it comes pre-installed with Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, which nice. by all accounts is a very good uh, Zelda game. And yeah, $160. It's also about 140 quid. Uh, you look. I mean, it's a 2DS XL, so it's you know it's a chunky device. It does look. It looks really good. I'm really into it. Yeah. Um, so we'll embed a tweet if you want to take a look at it as well. I can't really tell from the images on the tweet from Nintendo of America, but the pattern on the back is that going to be slightly raised or is it all flat? Um, yeah, it's hard to tell. I think it looks like it's. I think it, it looks be... like raised. Yeah, it looks like it is, but it might just be the effect on the um, design. Mm. But either way, it does look cool. And the fact you get that game pre-installed is nice as well. Yeah, and also, like, you know, July, just in time for, like, summer holidays. People can, uh, kids can get it before the summer. And, you know, it's like such a durable piece of kit, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Bomb-proof, I hear. Mm. Nothing getting right. past that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any uh, anything else? I think that's kind of I think that's it, isn't it? We we've rattled through that at quite a pace. Yeah, that is it. I mean, I was going to mention actually the other day. I did go on the e store, the e shop on my Switch, and there was a new. It was like a pinball game, which was free to download on mm. Switch. Um, I downloaded it, but then I got distracted by Skyrim, and I've just been playing that. So maybe I should. I might. The problem is, I'm worried, like, because I'm really into Skyrim at the moment, and I fear that if I decide to take my foot off the pedal. Uh, I 
I find it difficult to get back into these big games. Like once I'm playing them, I'm really hooked. But as soon as I stop and I go off and play something else, I think to myself, yeah, mm, I can't be bothered to get invested again. So I feel like I need to like stay in the Skyrim hype until I'm done with that game. So I, I fear closing it. But I really want to. I really want to play Splatoon again. Yeah, I miss Splatoon. I don't know. I uh, I played some more Crawl on the weekend. Uh... Yeah. And I was like, obviously, you know how much I love and recommend that game. You like it, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Skyrim is, is weird because it's so, I think it like, it really captures your attention. And then as soon as you're out of it, it's like, oh, like you, you fall you out of it really mm-hmm. fast. Yeah. I kind of felt that way with Zelda as well, actually, where like, I mean, Odyssey, I can go back to and I'll know exactly where I am and I know what I want to do and I know what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to achieve. Skyrim, it's like you come out of it and then you go back and you're like, wait, so was I trying to get potions? Was I trying to do this quest? It's quite like it's very uh because there's so much to do. But what a ride. Yeah. It is, you know, and it like it feels really good on Switch. And like there's obviously been um been lots of Fallout stuff today. Uh Bethesda announced a new game, Fallout 76, but there's also um a 10 year anniversary of Fallout 3 coming up and a lot of like leaks and rumors are pointing to a Fallout 3 remodeling on the Switch. And like, man, I would love that. I would really, really love that. Fallout 3 is such a good game. Mm. And it's so like bleak and sparse and like atmospheric. Ooh, bleak, aren't they? Yeah, it's but really depressing. Yeah, of course they are. I set under a nuclear war. I had a dream I was in a nuclear war last night. It was horrendous. Well, there really you go. Not, I didn't what a real life one would be. Did you wake up in a cold sweat? No, um, but I, right. no, actually, um, it was yeah, it was it was weird. It was a weird one. Uh, Colin, I want to move on to group chat. Yeah, I do as well. What is group chat? Explain to me. What is it? So every week on the show, uh, we pick a big topic um, and we ask for your feedback and your thoughts on Twitter and on emails by hers handheld at gmail dot com uh, or Twitter at handheld podcast. This week, we wanted to. I wanted to temper expectations and find out how people are feeling about the upcoming Mario Kart World Tour coming to mobile. Is it later this year or next next year? I will Remember. quickly find out for you, man. Uh, so we had a reply from Phil, and actually, Phil really captured how I how I feel. About he, this how game. you feel? Yeah. How I feel? Very good. Uh, Phil on Twitter, I predict I'm going to be really excited by it and then be disappointed by some, some element like the need to be online or some sort of restrictive pay. I don't know if you meant play. We just um, know it's coming out any time between April 2018 and March 2019. So oh, okay, this financial year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. Like, I am trepidatiously excited for this game. But I think the things, for me, the things that could kill it off are always online. Because yeah. that has really hurt. Like I've bought Super uh, Super Mario Run, and I've paid money for that game, and I've downloaded it and deleted it so many times because it's great when my lifestyle suits being able to play online games. And then as soon as I'm like in a particular patch where I'm not online very much, the game is her- like frustrating. So I really hope it's not like that. The other thing I think that could mean this game really struggles is the controls. Like yes. I don't know about you, but I don't really feel like I've ever played like a great racer on mobile. No, yeah, um, I agree with that. So that's, like I'm really worried about it. That's what I'm worried about as well. That's that would be the point I'll bring up. Like I think it'll be great, it'll be fun, I'll definitely check it out. Because you know, as we've said, with Nintendo games that um with Mario in, there's always like a uh a standard to the polish and how great it plays, and it's always gonna look nice and play well. But the whole idea of playing a racing game on mobile always makes me uneasy because of the whole virtual um, controls that you have on screen, so the joysticks and things like that. Never got on with them, always found them difficult. In fact, when I used to play um, the Sonic the Hedgehog, the original one, it was released on iPad. Um, to control that, you had a joystick and the buttons on screen. Always very frustrating because if you just sort of slid over a bit too far, if you're getting it really into a level, you wouldn't move. Or if you slid too far to the other side, you press the wrong button. So I'm interested to see how they're going to implement it, you know, on mobile Mario Kart. It might be that your car's always moving and you just have to steer it, but I hope not. I don't know. 
Maybe yeah, um, is it also is it always going to be accelerating? Is yeah, it going to? I don't know. I hope not, because that's not that's not a real that's not a Mario Kart game, is it? That's just like a watered down, accessible, family friendly version, which we don't want. But maybe that's who Nintendo are, who are trying to attract, because they think if they can Do get you... like the casual gamer in on mobile, mm. it will make them in the long run buy the actual proper full version on Switch I've... or wherever. I've got a theory for you, Colin. Here it is. Let's hear it. Do you think it's going to play in landscape or portrait? Because every be Nintendo landscape. release so far on mobile, I think, has played in portrait. Well, that makes sense because they obviously want it to be a seamless experience. And in portrait, most people's phones are always in portrait mode, aren't they? Yeah. But I think with this, they can't do it in portrait mode, can they? I don't know. Can don't know. they? Unless like the bottom, it, maybe the bottom hmm. is a steering wheel. I don't know. Maybe we have to With turn a, your phone to move. Maybe they'll use the sensors. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really hope. Well, I, the thing is, though, to be fair, if anyone could nail tilt controls, it would be Nintendo because they've done it before. On like, I know some people swear by tilt controls on the Wii version. So, yeah, can't we'll help. see. Can't help it if we're tilted. Call it. Doot, doot. Yep. What is next week's group chat? Next week's group chat. I've got a good one for you. All right. So we've learned today that Sonic Team Racing is coming out on Nintendo Switch and a lot of different consoles and platforms later this year. But which Sonic character, and uh, obviously we only confirmed so far is Sonic and Shadow. They're the only two characters that we've seen in the trailer. What character do you want to be in a Sonic character do you want to be in Sonic Team Racing? And more importantly, what do you want their vehicle to be? Uh, What's going to be their vehicle of choice? Any character from the Sonic canon, it ha the only rule is it has to have been a character that's been in something Sonic related. So any of the TV shows, any of the old games, critically panned, you know, critically loved. We want to know. Obviously, you've got the common characters who everyone knows and loves, but I want to hear your thoughts on the really obscure Sonic characters. And if they were to be in Sonic Team Racing, what would their vehicle be? What would it, it could be I... any vehicle? It could be a jet ski, it can be uh, a lifeboat, uh, it can be an airplane, anything. Anything. I, know your I really hope, Colin, you're going to hashtag the shit out of this on Twitter because the Sonic fans are. The fan base around Sonic is really quite incredible. <laughs> it's like this, like the, the passion is just huge. Yeah, there is a, there's big love for Sonic. I'm one of them. I, I wouldn't say I'm fanatic, but I I, lo I like my boy Sonic. He's my boy. My what happens? Boy. What's the Google result for Colin the Hedgehog? Is it is it a good one? Colin oh, the Hedgehog. Oh, Colin the Hedgehog. Have you done this? No. Where you Google your first name and the Hedgehog, you get all <laughs> sorts of. Like a fan art, some of it great, some of it not so much. Oh my god, look at that ginger one in the top left. Oh man, we need to. I'm gonna embed some of these on the um, <laughs> on, the, uh, on the article so you can have a look. Chris the Hedgehog, wow. Oh, yours isn't too bad. There's one, there's a Sonic character here with big boobs. Um, I'll leave it at that. And there's a Sonic who's holding a ring saying, I am the Lord of the Ring. There you go. I didn't realize there's so much fan art online for uh for sonic there you go well, that's gonna people love it people love it great anyway how can people get in contact with us chris so here's the thing it's actually really bloody simple because you can tweet us at handheld podcast you can email us here at handheld at gmail.com. you can go on the website which is here is handheld.wordpress.com and there is also a facebook page it's Whoa. that simple. So just search for us handheld if you're interested. Subscribe on YouTube if you're a YouTube watcher. Uh, thank you for watching. You can hit the bell and get notifications as to when our program is published, normally every Wednesday night about 9 o'clock-ish. Um, and, yeah, I think that's it. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing your group chats for next week. Pitch us some, some great Sonic car ideas for Sonic Team Racing. Dead keen. Thank you for listening, everybody. We appreciate your love and support. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. But until then, have a great week playing handheld gaming devices. Play Pokemon Quest. Let's get some feedback on Pokemon Quest. Goodbye. <laughs>